Hi guys, I have another Copic coloring and card tutorial for you today. And first of all, happy 4th of July to all my American viewers out there. I made this specially for you. Uh, I am coloring uh, Jenny Chairs by Make It Crafty. And if you're really, really quick, this uh, image is actually discounted over at Make It Crafty until the 5th of July. So. Uh, you could jump over and get it for a discounted price. Otherwise, she will be in the store um, in the future too. She's really, really adorable. I really, really like her. And when I saw her, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with her for 4th of July. And I have been scrambling to get this video together because I sat up to like 2 o'clock in the morning yesterday to just record all of this. Because it takes a quite, quite a long time. I think I had one and a half, two hour coloring time for her. So it's these videos doesn't take a little time to make. It takes about from start to finish, from idea to creation, somewhere around eight to 10 hours. Yeah, so um, that is also one of the reasons why I haven't been posting because I hadn't had the energy or time. But yeah, to the image and the coloring and everything, um, I'm used, uh, using a different dark shade this time. I used uh, E71. It makes it a little bit more brownish violet and it makes her feel a little darker um, and so if you want to give her a darker skin a darker Caucasian skin E71 is great to have as the darker shade uh, I do prefer I think the blue violet as it's um, doesn't muddy things up as easily as, as the E71 did uh, now when it comes to her hair, this is going to be a, a hair intensive video, which most of my Make It Craft images uh, or videos are because she has so much lovely uh, girls with just adorable hair and I'm having so much fun coloring it. Um, I've said this before with, with uh, these kind of characters, uh, the kind of curls doesn't work for my original uh, strandy kind of hair because it's so many details. So instead I try to make them in, in those strands that already are. I'm going to color her red, white and blue, even though her hair and the white have a tendency to go a little bit more to the gray because I'm using the Tony Grace to shade the white. I still really, really like how it turned out. It's really bright hairdo. And yeah, there were my little kitty, a little quick look of him. He was ho hopping up on the table when I was working. He does that sometime and he isn't that little. He's like six and a half kilos. He's a huge kitty and he's not overweight, so. And he's not even adult yet. I don't know which size he will be in when he's finished. Yeah. But um, when it comes to uh, the hair and the colors I've chosen, I'm actually working together with the Simon's Stamp card kit for July, which came in the mail like yesterday. And uh, I have made a haul for that that will come up tomorrow. But. Um, the colors in that kit are red, white and blue and it's very uh, sale inspired but they ha do have a whole bunch of papers there that have stars in them and lines in them and make them feel very um, 4th of July. I really like that the July kits usually are red, white and blue but have papers that work for the whole season. Uh, last year's had a uh, post as the kind of theme so there were a lot of uh, envelopes and stuff on the papers and this year's is a sale theme but it's red white and blue so I could make this lovely card and as I said it's very hair intensive I started by kind of laying out the shadows for that specific color um, in the lightest color that I was using um, more to kind of divide the different st strands so I knew which strand would be which color 
um, but also to kind of figuring out does this look good. As I said before, if you lay, lay it out with the lightest color, then if you decide that those shadows doesn't look good, you can just ignore to add the darkest color there and you won't see in the end that you put shadows there for a while. So that is why I'm using the lightest color to kind of map it out. Uh, I especially do that with uh, images that I haven't colored before. Sometimes I might actually do two or three cards with the same image just to kind of figure out where I'm going with the card before I do a video. And when I've done that, I usually know where I want to put all the shadows and therefore I don't need to kind of map it out with the lightest color. But I think in this case, I actually haven't colored her before. This is my first time coloring her. I really liked how the hair turned out. I wished I had had more blending in it, uh, but I still really like how, how all of the things turned out. And um, more about my thought process, maybe. I actually, I saw Zoe color, had colored this image up on the blog and she had made it in red, white and blues also, uh, but not with the hair. She had black hair, I think. And I saw her image and I'm like, she should have used different strands, uh, colored of the strands. That would look so awesome. So I tried that. You will have to excuse me. I will have to sip some water now and then because it's like 29, 27 degrees outside here in Sweden. And that is hot for Sweden, then Celsius by the way. Uh, so it's very, very hot and I had to close a few of the windows, uh, not all of them, but um, to kind of reduce the sound. We live very close to a motorway, so we have the motorway sounds in the background. But yeah, um, I'm using uh, T4, T2 and T0 to shade her hair. If I wanted it to be a little bit more white, I would have made the shadows much much less and then I would have gone over with bees, uh, with this zero, the colorless blender, where it's supposed to be the widest to kind of remove any grey that I have previously colored there. But uh, I kind of liked having the grey-ish white, the grey-ish white because it gave it a little bit more depth. I like depth, you have understand that right? I'm using the same colors right through the whole project because I wanted to kind of tie in together. So I am at using the same uh, grays, the same reds and the same blues in her clothes also. Um, it makes it easier if you use a kind of narrow color palette because then you don't have the issue of colors not working together. and. I thought this would be a perfect red, white and blue project, so I didn't want to bring in that many other colors. If you don't want to make like bright color hairs like I do, it's just one of the things I really like to do. I do have my bright color pink. Um, I would recommend using browns or um, trying to find n neutral colors, trying to kind of match um, if you're using browns, trying to match the amount of red in the browns together with the rest of the colors you are using. Um, I try very often to keep either ha use warm colors or cold colors and not mix it up that much. This is actually pretty cold blue, but I'm trying to use colder reds to kind of balance in that. And before I actually started this project, I made a little paper with all the color combinations kind of colored up so that I could see that they would fit with the pattern papers that I'm using. So that is how I do it. I do use all four different colors for these kind of swirly things, uh, but you don't really need it. You don't need to shade with all the four colors. I did it because I wanted to really tie in with the rest of the colors, but with so small things like these, you can get easily get away just using two colors per shadowing. 
and you might not even have to shadow if you don't want to. Um, I'm using my Cutter B scissors by EK Success to cut my image. I really love these scissors because they have very narrow blades so it's easy to get a really nice cut. Um, but otherwise cutting images out is practice. I can tell you I've been doing this for years and it's practice. You have to practice doing it. Um, it doesn't come out perfectly the first time. You have to find what is the kind of right amount of border for you. Um, because you, you will find that there is a, a certain amount of border that is easier for you to cut than others. Uh, I've started with my card here. Um, I am cutting it, the uh, pattern papers out. As I said, uh, these are the materials from the Simon's Stamp card kit. However, I'm using Schoolhouse Red cardstock instead of the brighter red that came in the kit because I think it uh, worked a little bit better. Uh, the Schoolhouse Red is also from Simon's Stamp. Then I'm using some Lawn Fawn uh, alphabet stamp called Violets ABC, which I really, really like. And I'm going to white emboss this onto this uh, Schoolhouse Red cardstock. I have cut it down to for the text to fit. I think it's seven eighths of an inch wide strips. So first I am I have put up the words on the both sides on my kind of um, my plastic box or what it's called. Uh, so on one side it says happy fourth and the other says of July. But I start by just inking up of and then I'm removing the of to not have accidentally stamp that again and just stamping the July because I'm going to cut that strip into two parts. The sentiment's going to be three different flags. But as I said, I am going to heat emboss this in the Hero Arts white embossing powder. And I have a few of my embossing powders in these kind of boxes. The ones I use the most, which mostly is the white Ranger Gold, I think. I think those are the two I use the most. Um, I do have the uh, some other of the ranger ones in boxes too, but mostly just use those. So uh, after I heat set it with my heat tool, I'm kind of mapping out where I want these to go and I'm giving them some flag ends. So there's uh, three different flags coming out underneath her. Um, this is the, the first flag. I actually cut a slit in the middle to make the flag end. The other ones I kind of just, yeah, this one too. I think the last one I'm just doing the flags. But having that line in the middle actually makes it easier to center um, the middle of the flag. After uh, kind of positioning everything, I've put some tape runner um, on that little extra tab I left on my flags. Uh, so that I can attach them to my character directly uh, and then I'm going to put foam tape underneath her. I'm trying to get these uh, kind of positioned equally distance from each other and still fit because I realized they are pretty big flags and she wasn't as tall as I kind of hoped. But it yeah, I think it turned out pretty good. I'm using my 3M Scotch uh, foam tape to uh, add dimension to the card. Uh, I'm cutting long strips of it and just putting them on the back side. Then I'm using my Crafted Companion tape runner to put the card base together or card... I don't know, mat together. Um, I love matching my papers because I get a distance from them and therefore it's easier to actually use different patterns on the patterns paper if you give um, a really good um, border to them because otherwise they can easily just get lost in each other. So that is one of the reasons why I mat all my papers. And I'm using the Schoolhouse Red for the matting too. 
And then I have put foam tape on over, taken off the foam tape papers and I'm positioning her where I want her. I really don't mind her kind of sticking out from the card. Um, I usually make my own envelopes so then I can make the envelopes just a little bit bigger so that it actually fits. And that is the card for today. I hope you liked it. If you do, please thumbs it up. It means a lot to me. If you have any questions, just a comment down below. And thank you so much for watching and happy 4th of July!